Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. And good morning. And today we're going to be rehousing some OBTs and some Killer Brachies Natani Charo. So the first locality you'll be seeing in this video today is the OBT Tete. And I have four specimens that I got to rehouse today on this video. And you'll also see two OBTs Mikumi localities, which they'll be rehoused in this video as well. And then we'll round it off with the four Kilobrachys Natani Charum juveniles, aka formerly known as the Kilobrachys Species Electric Blue. And I do have a story today. So at work, one of my managers asked, do I name my tarantulas? And I do, but I told my manager that I don't. And there's a reason why I say I don't. It's because it's kind of strange to name your spiders. I mean, I know it's normal to name your dogs and your cats, but to me, it's, uh, it comes off as strange. So I just say no, just so I don't look like an awkward person, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, they do know that I have this YouTube channel, so they're probably watching this. And, uh, yeah, if you're watching this, my manager, uh, just to let you know, I do name my tarantulas, but I kind of keep it on the low end. So <laughs> don't get mad at me. And uh, that's the story for today. But let us get back into this video. So this rehouse is going to be a bit straightforward. Now we did have one tarantula run out on us and we do have some defense postures in this video as well. So if you want to see that, stick around. So typically when a tarantula does a defense posture, most likely it's because they're scared and nothing else. So I don't really get intimidated by defense postures except for one species actually. But uh, let us not discuss about that. Well, actually, let's discuss about that. So defense postures don't really make me intimidated nor scared when a tarantula does it. All it tells me is that, hey, just leave me alone. I don't want to be messed with. And that's essentially what they're saying. So defense postures don't really threaten me or unnerve me, if you get what I'm saying here. But <laughs> in my experience, there has been one tarantula, you know, that did a defense posture. And honestly, every time they do it, it makes me, I don't want to say scared, but it makes me think. And I don't want to say it scares me in a way of thinking, but it just makes me think. Yeah, I don't know. And it's not really the species, but rather the specimen itself. Now, I never actually shown this species or specimen here in the channel, and the reason why is because I don't have them anymore. But I will say it was a very niche species though. Hmm. Let's make this interesting actually. So, to my subscribers, I'll give you one guess and one try. Leave it down in the comments below on what you think that defense posture tarantula is. And if you guess the species right, and if you're in the United States, I will send you a free juvenile in Balfouri. And I apologize, if you're outside the United States, I can't really ship any tarantulas to you guys. But I will give you the privilege of naming the next 10 tarantulas that we get if we ever get new tarantulas. So that's the overall plan. If you're in the United States, and if you guess the species right that I'm talking about, then I'll give you a free Monocentropus Balfouri Juvenile Female on me. And if you're outside the United States, I can't give you any tarantulas, but I will let you name the next 10 tarantulas that we get if we ever do add any more into our collection. So you only get one species for one comment per person. And also, as of the posting of this video, it is February 16th, 2024. So I'll give it until March 21st, 2024 for you to guess it right. And I will say this species is very, I don't want to say elusive, but it's very niche. So the majority of you may have never heard of it, nor have the majority of you have owned it. But that's the reason why I'm making this such a high prize. <laughs> because uh, I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna get it. I'm not gonna tell you if it's old world or new world, and that's all the hints you're gonna get. So to recap on the hints, it's a species I've never shown on this channel because I don't have it anymore. It's very niche, and some people say it's probably elusive in this hobby. And I guess I'll give you one more hint. This tarantula is not a big species. Now I'm not gonna tell you how big they grow, but I wouldn't say they're the biggest species. And that's all you're gonna get. And I know you're gonna be asking, will I ever tell everyone what that tarantula species is? And their answer is probably not, because that's, uh, that's something I'm gonna keep for myself. But if somebody guesses it right, I'll admit it. So good luck. And also everyone, 
If you do have an answer, just keep it onto this video only. Don't post the answer to my other videos or don't send me through my emails and whatnot. Just keep the answers in this video only so that way I can check it much more easily. So good luck with your one guess and uh, let's see where this goes for the next month. So let's get straight back into this video. So anyhow, when it comes to rehousing, I'm not really the biggest fan of it. Nor is any tarantula breeder a big fan of rehousing to be honest. And the reason why is because it's time consuming and is very tedious. I honestly do not like cleaning out old enclosures because it can be a bit time consuming. Especially for tarantulas that web a lot. Because their webbings get stuck into the old enclosures. So I'm scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing just trying to get it off. And on though, it's pretty much your standard deli cups that you can buy online in bulk. I still clean them out and reuse them just to save money. And I'll tell you, space runs out quick when you're rehousing tarantulas. Because tarantulas grow obviously, so a bunch of tarantulas means a lot of space. And for me personally, I don't really have a lot of space to spare. I usually sell away, give away, or trade away tarantulas if I need to make space. And that is why I have not gotten anything new in my collection. It's really just because of space. Because you have to understand, a lot of tarantulas I have, they're going to grow bigger. And they're going to take up more space. And although I do currently have some space, I can't really use that space for new additions. Because I have to use it for my current collection. So be wise everybody. And that's all I got to say about space. But as for these specimens, I don't think I'll be rehousing them again anytime soon. For the OBTs that is. The Killabrachis Natani Charum, maybe I have to rehouse them again in the future. But these OBTs should be fine in these enclosures into adulthood. And I do plan on breeding these, so let us hope for the best. So I do have some plans for next week. So one is that I have to rehouse my Peace Lothario or Nada females. And I don't have enough enclosures, so I'm going to try to get more if I can. And oh boy, the thing about buying enclosures is that when you have a rack system or any sort of system, you have to buy your enclosures in bulk, and that is kind of the tedious thing. So let us see how many hundreds of dollars I have to waste on buying more containers. So that is my advice for new tarantula breeders, is to always buy your containers slash enclosures in bulk. Never buy it separately one at a time. Always buy them in bulks of 10, 25, 50s or more just to save you money. And I know tarantula enclosures can be cheap, but if you add in the feeding cost, the operating cost, the expenses, and everything all together, it, uh, man, it is expensive at times. But uh, let's not get too sidetracked about pricings for enclosures. So for next week, I will be rehousing some Peace Lothario or Nada females. And I'm not a big fan of rehousing arboreal tarantulas because usually the footage isn't so great. But let us see what we can do. And I do have some Peace Lothario or Nada males that are maturing out. So if you want to do it alone, by all means, feel free to contact me. And I also got one more other plan for next week. But I don't know exactly how it's going to go. So let us wait for the timing. And if I think the timing is right, then I'll make a video out of that. And that is essentially the two videos I have planned for next week. So while I do not enjoy rehousing tarantulas at times, next week is an exception because it's my favorite tarantula species of all time. The Peace Lotheria or Nada. I love them a lot. My all-time favorite species. But I'm sure that everyone has at least one species they like to rehouse. Or like to own, so that will also be great to hear as well, I guess. The only thing I wish is that sometimes I wish the Peace Lotharias grew slower so that way I can enjoy my time with them even more and just watch them grow over time. It's kind of upsetting at times to see tarantulas growing too fast into adulthood and you don't really get enough time to bond with them. Especially for Peace Lotharias and any fast growing species from sling to adulthood. And I know that slow growing species is kind of a bit of a turn off especially for those who don't want to wait like 5 to 10 years for a decent sized specimen and whatnot. But I think that's kind of the charm of slow growing species at times though. It's the fact that it takes so much time and effort to watch them grow that it's almost like raising your own child. So to see my piece like there or not as grow so quickly it's kind of sad to see because honestly the only things I've ever done was rehousing and feeding not to really necessarily giving myself time to enjoy them because you got to remember i have a lot of tarantulas here in my collection and although i sold away and pretty much downsized a lot of them 
there's still too many to actually look over so I don't really get as much time as I want to to enjoy my spiders so I'm hoping by having a smaller collection over time I can actually start to enjoy my spiders even more and trust me I tried my best to slow down their growth rates but tarantulas be tarantulas and they grow however they want to so man I really do wish that I can just enjoy them more often because Peace Lotharias don't really live too long because of how fast they grow. So a lot of people say they live 10 to 15 years in captivity. In my experience, they live more so about 5 to 7 years. Maybe 8, but for the most part, they don't really live that long. But if somebody does have a Peace Lotharia specimen that has lived over 10 years, please let me know because I will be highly curious. And I guess I called this a video for today. So, as always, Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday. And also, support me on my social medias, such as my IG and my Patreon. And with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.